Greetings and welcome to In-Depth, I'm DK Roster. Now, many times we hear the name Natalie Howe, we're thinking about the sense of style that she helps to imbue to this space through her line, Decolte by Natalie Howe. We're here to see a different side of her today though, in terms of her being a fitness enthusiast and a trainer. Really looking forward to this conversation. Natalie, thank you very much for making the time and I'm very happy to have this conversation because I don't see it. But at the same time, when I see people talking about you on Facebook, yes, man, you see melanin, goddess, black Barbie, all these sorts of things. But in terms of just fitness and your fitness, how did your journey begin? Um, thank you for having me, first of all. Um, well, the thing is, I think fitness has always been part of my life. I can remember, um, you know, growing up, primary school, I've been involved in track and field and netball. Um, I remember as well, you know, being scolded by the principal because I was playing cricket before the school bell rang in the morning. You know, so imagine me, imagine me, you know, I, I always consider myself a sweaterholic. I would call myself a sweaterholic because I love that. And for me, I grew up thinking, seeing my mom and dad, um, you know, getting involved. So my dad, you know, after his corporate life, um, he would, you know, get home and, you know, play football on the streets, as well as my mom, you know, I know her as someone who, you know, would walk every morning, every, every morning. And up to this day, she still does that. So I've seen them do that, as well as, you know, living in the country. I grew up in Point Fortin and having a lot of yard space, um, it afforded me the opportunity to, to play. So it all started with play. You know, and um, then I realized that um, life happened, you know, the corporate life. And then I started to, of course, time got consumed. And I realized that, you know, I needed to keep that, that fitness going because it's something that I realized was ingrained in me. All right. I, 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 I couldn't do without it. So when it is I started to, to work, I realized that. I needed to have a balance and I saw fitness as an opportunity to create that balance. So while I was very active in primary school, secondary school, I did nothing. At university, it's like fitness was going out of style because I was in track and field, I was in netball, I dabbled in table tennis, I dabbled in volleyball. And then I realized that it's a lifestyle. It is actually part of me. It's part of me. So, you know, therein I realized that, you know, I have to continue. And then I found um, a fitness group that I worked with for many years, you know. So having that as well as, you know, different activities, fusion adventure races, which is very dear to my heart, um, going into the forest and running and trail running and that kind of thing, it has always been part of me. So the journey started back then, but it has always been part of me. It's one thing to be a sweaterholic, and as you're doing it for yourself, but helping to involve other persons on the journey, because I can imagine people coming up and saying, Gail, what are you doing? Oh gosh, let's show me something now. What, what was that like for you in terms of saying, okay, well, you're going to help train other individuals to get to some level approaching wellness, approaching health? Okay, well, I realize that, you know, as much as I love it, um, I needed to be more proficient in it, proficient in it, and in being proficient, I needed to, of course, gain certification in order to, you know, to extend extend that olive branch to other persons. So I became certified, and then I, you know, solicited clients. Persons would actually approach me, and I'd be like, "Hey, you know, so I'm certified, and you know, I'm offering these classes. You know, if you want to join, you can." So I actually offered boot camp classes at this facility here in El Dorado, <clears throat> as well as online classes. And those started at the start of the pandemic. Um, <clears throat> I realized that also my first personal training client was actually my dad who passed away. Um, he got a stroke in 2020 and um, 
I found that, you know, I helped a lot in his rehabilitation and, you know, from that I started my journey as an instructor. It's a beautiful thing to be able to do that because sometimes we, we might be helping people outside but then we don't realize that those in our circle, I think it just kind of hits different to be of service to those who have been of service to us and literally played such a role in our lives growing up. But um, does it feel any different? Does it feel like work work as opposed to just something you do a way of life when you're, when you're training? Because what you do for yourself is one thing. You might fall off, you might take a pause. Mm -hmm. But looking and seeing, okay, well, this is actually something that helps to derive income for you. Does it look any different? Does it, do you feel any different about health and fitness as a trainer? Um, I think it is, it's different because um, I think you have to think outside of yourself because not all clients are the same. You know, what I may do for myself, you know, box jumps and crazy stuff, I can't, I can't you know, plan a workout like that for persons. All right? So it's different because you have to, of course, incorporate um, the different clients, what their needs are, what their goals are, what their capabilities are as well. So planning takes a lot of time. Whereas, you know, for myself, I know what my capabilities are and I can switch it, switch it up as I so feel like. You know, so it's a bit of a challenge, but I love it all the same. Let me talk about certificates. Talk about certification now. Brush your shoulder off. Let people know what it is they're dealing with. So what kind of certification are we talking about? I'm an Alpha Group Fitness Instructor, um, NASM Personal Trainer, as well as some other nutritional courses, certified TRX Instructor. Yeah. They call in name and I like to say that I'll go and Google some of them. But and was, was the process towards certification like? Is it that you have to deal with case bodies? Is it that you need to, you, talk, you spoke about nutrition, you have to be in the kitchen looking, counting calories a little differently. What is that process of certification like? Um, well, it's actually, um, you know, some, some certifications are like year-long certifications where you have to, of course, cover the subject matter. Um, the AFA, I know for the group fitness, fitness instructor, they are practical elements. All right, so some certifications you have practical. Um, some of them you have, of course, theory and practical. All right, and with that, while we're thinking about that, we're going to be taking a short break. When we return, we continue speaking with Natalie How? Stay with us. we come back with more. Welcome back. We continue our conversation with fitness enthusiast and the trainer Natalie Howe. And so you, just before we took the break, Natalie, we were speaking about certification. But even before that, you were talking about horses for courses and designing plans for individuals. One, how do people get on to you? And then two, how do you work with that person to decide, OK, Looking at your goals, looking at where you are, this is, this, this is some of the stuff that I want to do with you. Okay, well, um, I have an active social media presence. My Instagram handle is at natshow, N-A-T-S-H-O-W-E. Um, or you can find me at Natalie How um, on Facebook. Um, my phone number is 3310603. But what I would do is, you know, I would have you know, an, ass an assessment done where I would look at, you know, the person's activity level, you know, what they're involved in their social life as well, any historical medical information that I would need to have on hand, um, take into consideration their goals, short-term short -term and long-term goals um, as it regards to fitness or movement um, and the time period in which they have um, that they want to work with. All right, I'll use that to make recommendations for a fitness program design a program um, that's flexible to, um, to their needs as well, and also include things that would be dynamic and they would not get bored. Um, of course, you have to look at, as well, the reassessment, in, including progression as well, so that, you know, that they continuously you know, get better and they achieve their goals in the short term and in the long term. 
What are some of those goals? Because I can see some people saying, Natalie, I'm reaching by you because Savannah is doing it. And the, and the customer order is a little smaller than I am now. So I want to make sure I fit in. So what are some of the goals that people have coming to you saying that, OK, well, you're the person who is supposed, supposed to be able to help them? Um, well, I would usually tell them that they need to be realistic, first of all. So there are no quick fix, fit, there are no quick fit, um, fixes. fixes, sorry, in mm. fitness, none at all. So we have to be very realistic. So if it is you're coming with an unrealistic goal, uh, no. <laughs> you need to be very realistic. So of course that gives them a timeline and we would work with that, intensify where we need to, change up things where we need to. And looking at the fact that you also dealt with nutrition, does that play into what it is you're doing? Because I heard some people say that, um, yes, while you're building the body that you want, a lot of that happens in the kitchen. So how does that play into the work that you do with persons? Yeah, yeah, yeah. So you have to consider, because fitness is just 20%, nutrition is the majority. So we have to consider as well, you know, your macronutrients, your protein, your carbohydrate intake, um, some people think that when it is they don't eat, they will lose weight, which is not the case. You need to provide energy for your workouts in order to, you know, reap the benefits. So nutrition plays a very, very vital role in the entire wellness package. And sometimes one of the things that we can do is, you spoke about having unrealistic goals. I think sometimes that also plays in, in the reverse and we can be so critical on ourselves. I was going good and then instead of dropping, I add two pounds. What I got to do? Do you need to talk down anybody from le le ledges, shelves? How, how do conversations like that go sometimes? Um, number one is, well, in mine is the biggest muscle. I usually tell people that and, you know, Usually, usually, you know, it takes a while for you to get to where you're going. So it's just a matter of having patience, you know, sticking with the program, you know, trying ways for them not to be demotivated, um, changing up the workout, you know, going on a hike is a workout, you know, going on a hike is a workout. So changing it up a little bit um, so that, you know, mentally people are maintaining strength. And, and I like the fact that you talk about shifting things up, but we also in this space where we're going to jump in some bacchanal in a little while but um are there groupings that come as well and i could see the one of the pros of that is that people help motivate each other you have somebody to help hold you accountable hey we had to get ready we had to go so what kind of groups do or do you deal with groups as well as opposed to just individuals Yes, yes, yes. So actually, my, I am more inclined to, group, to move with groups. I love the group dynamics. I think I always, I am a big supporter of group work because I think, you know, people bring out the best in people. So once it is you have individuals to hold you accountable, um, persons to say, hey, you know, workout is five o'clock, what are you doing home? You're sticking, you're sticking, let's go, let's go. Or to call and follow up on you in terms of, you know, your goals, you know, where it is you are at the moment. I think those things really help build competency. I think it really helps to keep you engaged, to keep you enthused and accountable. So, yeah, I, I love group work. I love group dynamics. I hold it very, very dear. And I feel sometimes people, you say bringing all the best in people, people just not trying to look bad. <laughs> I can't be the last one. Well I did do two more. <laughs> but um, in speaking about two more, time kind of wrapping up, but I want to know what does this path, and I think it's a path because sometimes you may pause, start back, try a new area, learn something about yourself. What do you learn from, or what does your fitness journey teach you specifically? Um, it, teach me, it teaches me that I am stronger than I think I am. Every day is a learning experience. I learn something new every day, and I realize that it is ingrained in me because, you know, you're blessed with so much talent and the journey is not just for me, it's for others. You know, blessed with the talent in order to give to others. So it is actually 
her passion. It's my purpose. And I think it's, it gels really well with my brand, the Colte, because without fitness, my brand would not have survived. Because it takes a lot behind the scenes to produce, to be an entrepreneur. And without fitness, I do not think I would have survived the Colte. So it is purpose in action. It is divinity in action. It is me giving back what has been given to me. How much of a blessing is it to be able to do something that you love and think you will, you're walking in your future? I think it is a wonderful blessing. It's a wonderful blessing because not everybody can see that they are walking in their purpose. And I can safely say that, you know, I have passions, but one purpose. And the purpose is, of course, to give what has been given to me. And in terms of giving, I wanted to give some advice a little bit now. So, because there's a saying that the best time to plant a tree is 20 years ago. Second best time is today. People who have not started the fitness journey and they're thinking, thinking, thinking about it because the road to hell could be paved with good intentions. Huh? Yeah. How would you suggest that someone start? What, what does someone need to do before they start? Um, but starting is actually the hardest thing to do. I am not taking that away from anyone. It is the hardest thing to do. But what I would say is um, find someone, let's say a professional, I am like myself or any other trainer, that you are you know, more inclined to be attached to based on you know, what they are offering. So there are many trainers out there, you know, they offer boot camp, outdoor, indoor, gym, hikes. Find something that you like because the premise is movement, all right? It don't have to be anything fancy, just start to move. And once you start to move, you'd realize that you want to, you know, change different things, be more dynamic. You might, you might want to join a gym. You may want to, you know, run a 5K, you know, that kind of thing. So find something that you like and start from there. Take small bites, all right? As, as we usually say, room wasn't built in a day. Take small bites and, you live in, and set goals for yourself. Set goals as you go along and you get there. You get there. But be patient. The mind is the strongest muscle and believe in yourself. Now you're saying room wasn't built in a day. I don't know if I'm going to be like Nero fiddling while Rome burned down, but we're actually going to end this conversation and pick up again because I'm going to do a session. So pray for your boy. But Natalie Ho, thank you very much for the time that you've spent with us thus far and what we're going to deal with next. And on behalf of the entire TTT News team, thank you for tuning in. This has been In Depth with me, DK Roster. Thank you so much for joining us.